Well, what have we here? A stag hiding in the bushes. Can mean only one thing. You know, you know. Over there, beyond the trees. It's the hooligan swim. Raysbury South Lake. No carp bay. But that's not where we're going. We're going this side of the tracks. Raysbury North Lake. There's the layout. Still got some of my old names that me and Phil made up on there. And to start with, we are headed towards um where are we? there which is the style swim probably fishing out there where it says lake that's going to be the starting point I've had a quick look this morning Back at my old stomping ground. And we're hoping, obviously, to catch some of those. And some of those. None of them. And preferably, none of them. Okay. Get on the new barra, the new improved barra. The Makita machine. Electric, I'll have you know. Had to make some adjustments. It was a good barra, but it wasn't quite right for fishing. We welded an extra bit of the back there so that we can shift the load to the more to the handles. It was a bit top heavy before. But now she's ready to rock and roll. Not the fastest, but slow and steady wins the race, eh? Okay, time to push. So here we are. The style. Unfortunately, what used to be the off license is now a car lot. If I run out of strong bow, I'll have to go further. Further than I used to for it, but I won't. <coughs> this is my plot. Nice swim. This always been a good swim, even way back in the day. Little island close in. Long island out there. Or an island out there long. Rocky barge over there in the centre screen. On file bank. Spring gates point. Centre screen. Quite a weedy. I fished it, although I fished it, you know, it was decades ago I fished it. I have fished it a couple of, well, once I think, since. <coughs> Twice, the lake, but once this swim. And I know people are fishing here still, and uh, it'd be quite a weedy swim, but it always used to be a big, hard strip of gravel, like a little road ran through it about, I don't know, <laughs> testing my memory here, but around 70 yards. So I'm going to see if that's still there. Maybe fish one out long towards the barge. Might even tuck one up the back of that island. Dunno, let's see.
Right, finally we're three rod angling. Um, <coughs> took a bit of finding spots to be honest. <coughs> well, <laughs> and a bit of a mismatch really because the middle spot was very, very easy to find because it's enormous. Uh, assume that's where most people fish. It's completely stripped out, it's huge. And then on the left and the right I found two smaller spots the left hand ones just like a little it's all weed it's got very weedy out there it's all weed all around it and there's just it goes right down to the bottom it's not hard i think it's silt but you get sort of a half a rod lengths beautiful clear pool and then donk right into solid weed again i clipped up and dropped it in there three or four times and it was the same every time so happy with that and the right hand rod is absolutely solid weed out there. Chocker. And I just sort of put it on a clip and fanned it right to left and then added a rod length and fanned it right to left. Just kept working the area. Eventually got quite a firm drop. And again, small but proper clear. It's this little hole in the weed which is lovely. So I've spotted them all up, chucked them all out. Job's done. Maddie's not with me this week. She's decided to have a week at home. She just decides to not come sometimes. Refuses to get off the sofa or just legs it when I call her. <laughs> That's looking good. Quite confident, to be honest. It's a good area. Apparently the fish have been spending a lot of time in this sort of zone of the lake. I've not seen many. I've seen two. Um, but there's still two. I've been busy smashing the surface with various implements, so uh, I don't expect them to show while you're doing that. But no, it's all looking good. All looking good. And there we go. All we've got to do now set up the buoy and chill. Look at that for a carp fishing tea. Two garlic pork chops. Well, they were normal pork chops, so I put the new super seasoning on them. A very fitting dinner for a return to Raysbury. A bit of drizzle out there, as you can see now. Huh, seems to be coming in my direction now, the wind's changed. Normally at this stage I'd be saying I was hopeful for the night ahead, but according to absolutely everyone you speak to on here, it's all daytimes, which is perfect. Who wouldn't rather catch you in the daylight? So, hopeful for tomorrow morning. Now you've got to be happy with that, haven't you? That is a meal worth eating. Bivy fare at its finest. Smells amazing. <laughs> Just found a hedgehog under my bed. <laughs> How bizarre. At one o'clock in the morning, I heard some shuffling and rustling in my plate. And it was Mr. Hedgehog. Better, slightly better washed than normal before breakfast. Heard a couple of fish out there in the last sort of 20 minutes. I don't know why I'm awake. I went to sleep too early, as you do at this time of year, probably about half past eight. And I woke up again and had one of those moments where you think, is it nearly morning? And then a plane went over and I thought, hmm, is that an early morning plane or a late night plane? So I picked up the phone, looked at the time, and it was 10.35. <laughs> ah, 10.35. I 
and I no longer felt tired. I've been sat here reading ever since till the hedge will come along. So I suppose at some stage I'll have to go back to bed again. Bizarre fishing at this time of year. It's just always dark o'clock, isn't it? Well, it's quarter past five in the morning. Um, and despite being assured that you don't get bites here until daylight, I've had one. <laughs> That's what we used to say back in the Raysbury days. My first North Lake fish for decades. And guess what? It's huge. It looks lovely. Prop, big shoulder, deep skate. It looks like a Sutton. Looks a bit at a glance like that posh Sutton that I had out of um, Kingsmead one last winter. Literally just netted him. Look at him. He's a proper one. An absolute proper that big sky over on his side. Crinkly old tail. You can't see his head in, but he has got some head in. Massive great shoulders, he's proper deep. He's a big fish. Big old kipper. Oh. Just a one bosh out there. I'm liking it here. So here we go. Look at that for a carp. <laughs> I don't know. It looks, happy. it looks like one of the Suttons to me, but I know it's called No Name. I don't know its origin, but it is a massive. Look at that crinkly old tail on it. What an absolute. I bloody love it here, I do. I think it loves me. <laughs> oh, you, oh man, you are some carp. Look, look at the other side. Oh. Oh. That's the way to do it. Just touch that screen. <laughs> and all before breakfast, eh? What a touch. Thank you very much, Raysbury One. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, I'm happy with that. How about that for a start to the trip, eh? Um, I've got some adjustment to make as well, very much in my favour. Um, I weighed the fish with the guy next door. He came down and helped me do the, all the doings, you know, photos and what have you. Um, and we both agreed when we weighed it was exactly 22 kilos. Sometimes it's easier on them big dial scales to go for any number that the needle stops on and try and squint in the dark and count with your fingernail how many digits um, and I've done my maths very wrong I thought 22 kilos was 46 pounds it's actually 48 and a half pounds 48 and a half pounds exactly 22 kilos it was that's a monster I mean like a proper monster Oh, it's going to be a beautiful day. Well, it already is, really. I absolutely stink of carp slime. Great, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I love it. Get a nice sunrise as well, by the look of it. Well, that's like another one now, isn't it? I don't know why, but I'd convinced myself it wasn't a very big fish. 
when I was playing it. Um, I got it about two thirds of the way back and it just banged up absolutely solid in the weed, like proper rock solid. And bouncing the tip, trying to, sometimes if you bounce the rod, it, it, um, rather than just a steady pull, sort of bouncing it a bit, tears the roots out of the weed, gets it moving a bit, but it wouldn't. So I had to put it back on the rests and leave it. When I got the bite, funnily enough, I had I just wound in a rod, even though it was only whatever it was, five in the morning. Um, I've got four spots I've baited out here, but only three rods. And I'd heard a couple proper bosh out, and they sounded like obviously they was on the one spot I wasn't fishing. Um, so I wound my right hand rod in. Um, I wasn't 100% sure with that right hand rod. So I just felt it as I was before I wound it in. Oh, it was perfect. It slid beautiful and then bang into the weeds. So I was a bit gutted that I'd moved it. Um, but I wound that in and I was just about to wrap that up to put it on the spot where I'd heard a couple show and the middle rod ripped off. Um, yeah, so I'd got it in, I got it banged up in the weed and I had to put it back in the rest and leave it. And while I was waiting, I wrapped up the right hand rod. So, you know, for a a little while there, I only had one rod in the water. And I came back down, propped the other rod up against the bivvy, gave it another little tentative pull, and straight away I could feel a little bit of movement. And it was just like a dead weight. And I thought, oh, don't have come off and left me with a big load of weed. And just nothing, just heavy, heavy, and then like a little donk, donk. Oh, you still on? And when I see him come up in the head torch and gin clear margins, I see it right down deep coming up. Oh, I don't look like a bad fish. And then it gets closer than it. And you think, oh, oh, it's getting bigger. It's getting bigger. It's getting bigger. And as he went in the net, I thought, oh my God, look at him. What a carp. Well, it's got to be breakfast time, isn't it? Breakfast of champions. Bacon and eggs. And, in time on a tradition, maybe only the most old school of you will remember, a Kong Valley carp breakfast can only include mushrooms when you've caught a carp. I'm having mushrooms today. Oh yes indeed. Most certainly. You can have them for dinner any old day, but you can only have them for breakfast when you've caught a carp. Egg, bacon and mushrooms. For the old job. Egg bacon and mushroom. <laughs> I thought I saved more than that. Oh well. A token gesture. Celebrate my capture. We'll have a mushroom. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. boiling it in there now. To me describing this as winter fishing and it's like, I don't know, late spring. 
but it's mid-November, so it is winter fishing. It doesn't feel like it. It felt like it last week when I was fishing into the wind. It was bloody freezing. There we go, the mushrooms. It was a big mushroom, so I managed to make four out of it. Celebratory breakfast. Yum, yum. It's been a good day. It's weird, isn't it? You only need between sort of November and March if you get one good fish in that period. I mean, I want more, obviously. But when I look back at K1 last winter and I think of the Bosch Sutton, you know, I look back at when I was on the Quarry Lake and I think of that gnarly old 40 pounder I had out of there. Um, Kitch, the 50 pound common I had on my birthday in December from Norvi Park. You know, all of those captures, single captures, but they when you know in retrospect when you look back that's what you remember you think oh i had a great winter on there you don't need a lot of fish at this time of year just a couple along the way and one good and happy days although obviously i'd like to get lots of good ones i'd like another one right now if i'm being totally honest Mmm. Mushrooms. No? Oh. He's texting the golden shop. Golden shop. God, how many of you remember that? Bernie the Bolt. Show me age now. You get two points if you've named the host of the golden shot already. Remember? Bob Monkhouse. Back in the days before reality TV, when quiz shows were, well, truly bloody awful actually, if I'm being honest. <laughs> but uh, entertaining. Just like that, all gone. You'll notice there's something missing this week. <clears throat> there isn't a certain scrounging someone about this tool. Madalena. I don't know what I've already mentioned, but she's she sometimes decides she doesn't want to come. Usually when I leave early, usually when it's the winter, she just clings onto the sofa. But she's happy at home. Our indoors is indoors. And Piglet's home as well. So the three of them will be having fun. She probably got fed up waiting for me to catch a carp. I thought, well, if you're not going to catch anything, I'm staying alone. No, she missed out, didn't she? Big time. Cup of tea, I think. Let's all look at the rod, shall we? Because I think one's going to go in a minute.
And we'll turn up for the book in the middle of the afternoon. Well, unfortunately, um, <laughs> the bit of video that followed, I made a bit of a cock up and forgot to take it off the manual focus. And it was perfectly focused, but not perfectly focused on me. I will show you a little bit. There you go. Look at that. Truly awful. Uh, it was one of the VS stockies, probably about 18 pounds. Lovely fish. Broke up the afternoon. But yeah, a bit of a disaster on the video front. Never mind. So there's my plot, the style. Just walking up here. this little bend so just here this used to be a swim back in the day it used to be called behind the off license and there through that fence that was the off license and shop this fence wasn't here <coughs> uh, it's obviously now a house and that's someone's garden so the actual bit you used to set up on, the actual swim itself, was here before the path. And the swim was down this, well, you used to have your rods up the top here. In front of it, you got this very treacherous, steep drop. <sighs> Obviously these fallen trees weren't here. So if you can imagine, you had your rods this isn't easy with a tripod, I must say. You had your rods right up there, so your rod tips would be coming out here and be a clear sort of, oh, what's that, eight feet above the water? And then you'd fish out here to this little island and to the gap between the islands and wherever you wanted, really. Now, like I say, your rods would be way up there in the air and all of this bramble and foliage and bushes and that none of this was here so let's make our way back up here so this was the swim as was like i say set up here now there was a couple of people guys that used to fish here uh, a young lad called al and he used to come they used to come from somewhere in yorkshire and he used to come up with an older bloke called Phil, who was a mechanic, I believe. And there was, I don't know, Phil would have been mid 50s, late 50s, 60 even, I don't know, maybe, maybe 60. And Al was only a, a young whippersnapper at the time, probably, I don't know, 20, something like that. So it's quite an age difference, but they knew each other up there and they used to fish together. <coughs> and one day they were both set up in here. Now, Al, the younger lad, um, he actually had his name changed to the Hun because we used to go in the off licence quite a lot, obviously, on our walks around and we used to get obviously cold beer. Also used to get them Tangle Twister ice creams from there uh, and our Kinder Eggs because we used to use, I don't know if you know about Kinder Eggs, but it's a chocolate egg shaped thing, you unwrap it, um, horrible chocolate, you throw that away and then there's a plastic egg shaped container inside. Now the plastic container made the perfect marker for boat fishing. Um, we used to get cork, wrap it in light line, heavy lead, let it down through your fingers till it hit the bottom, snap the little plastic container over it and that would stay floating out there for an ever and ever. So the, the lake was littered in these little yellow or blue plastic eggs. Inside the plastic shell you get a toy. Um, now the top toys were the ones you put together. <clears throat> You'd make uh, an aeroplane. You get a little instruction to stick these bits together and make like a little aeroplane or a boat or um, some of them were like little cars or dolphins that when you wheel them along their mouths open and stuff like that. They were the top toys. You never knew what you were going to get. Then you had sort of mid-range toys which was just plastic mouldings. And then right at the bottom of the scale of toy was the Hun. Now Hun is like, a, if you don't know, an old-fashioned soldier. They were actually a sort of a, a nomadic tribe, I think, in the 4th and 5th century that ravaged Europe. Um, you know, the sort of bearskin hat type soldiers. Um, 
<coughs> and Al, we used to get these, we used to get enough for everyone on the lake, and we'd give them all out, and we'd all open them all excited and see what toy we got. Uh, and Al only ever got the Hun. It was a die cast model, so um, a little metal model. And there was two, there was Hun, it actually had on it Hun 1 and Hun 2, and that's all he ever got. And they were like, you know, the worst of the toys. So anyway, his name was changed to the Hun. But that's neither here nor there. His mate, Phil, the older fella, uh, I think it's fair to say he liked to drink. He used to sometimes disappear in his bivvy for some days. <laughs> uh, yeah, he liked to drink a bit of whiskey or something. Anyway, the two of them were set up here. They were doubled up here. They always fished together. Um, the Hun used to do all the work, like rowing out the baits and doing everything. And Phil, I think, just used to get smashed most of the time, to be honest. Uh, anyway, it was in this swim that Phil also had his name changed to the unlikely moniker of Manup Musplash. Now, I'll need to explain. You know, nowadays, when you, if you were to make the noise of a buzzer yourself, you might go beep, beep like that, yeah? Well, then we used to go mana. That was the noise. So if you said, oh, I had a run in the night and it, it ripped off and it went, first thing I knew I heard mana. So it was always mana. Anyway, one day there's a bivvy here and a bivvy here and they're fishing out here with their rods, like I say, eight foot above the water. And Phil had a run. I don't think Phil had ever had a run from here. Um, and he had a screamer, he had a manure. And he came flying out his bivvy, and it was rare to see him outside his bivvy. He came flying out his bivvy, a bit wobbly and a bit too fast. And he went straight past, tripped, and went over the precipice, over all three rod tips, one of which was obviously screaming off manuring, and went splosh straight in the lake. Just before he hit the lake, he hit all three rod tips and brought the whole setup up, up, bosh, all in the lake. Hence, Manure Musplash. <laughs> and that's what he was known as ever since. Manure Musplash. Manure Musplash and the Hun. Famous old Ragebury characters. And it all happened here, in this swim. And in that off-licence. So there you go. Now you know, but it's no longer a swim. Bit of history gone. Ta-da. So, what are we going to drag out the style now then? We've had a great big one. We've had a little one. What's the chances of another one today? Apparently, according to the people who have been fishing here this year, and or recently, <coughs> this is a really good bite time. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. Which apparently between now and sort of four or five o'clock, or between now and dark really, <clears throat> it's a very good bite time, which is unusual for this time of year, but I ain't complaining. Much rather catch them in the daylight. Here's me. Oh, that's my new barra. I've mentioned it a couple of times. It's, me. it's blue, isn't it? It's proper blue. It's going to have a closer look. Right, my Makita Barra, as in Makita the, you know, tool company. It's electric, and it runs off of two of those. Well, it runs off of one of those, to be honest, one at a time. There's two in there. When one's flat, you just flick the switch <coughs> and it goes off to, over to the other one. Apparently you get seven and a half kilometres off each one, off the five volts. I've bought the six volts, they're a new battery that Makita have brought out. It's got a little handle um, for going there, under, the, under there's a little switch. As you go, it doesn't go very fast. I will say that it is quite a slow barra. <coughs> it's slower than the sort of fishing brands, but I think a lot better made. 
I mean, look at it. It's made for paving slabs and stuff. So it's actually made of this tubular, you know, proper solid bit of kit. It's even got down there this bit here on each side headlights <laughs> how about that I used them the other day when I came up here in the dark really handy you can see the path in front of you no head torch required but when I got it these handles here were up against here so the handles were right up there and it had, which is a very, very short wheelbase. <clears throat> so you couldn't get a lot of kit on it and it tended to tip forward because you know the weight was too far forward. Um, so I got my mate Chris, who's the super welder and does all my odd jobs, to weld extension bars. This bit isn't here normally and nor is this cross member. So he's welded extension bars and a cross bit of flat so I can put my cool box and my rucksack at the back which brings the weight to the back and now it's really good it's got 360 or whatever you want to call them wheels like revolving wheels go at any angle so turnings absolute piece of piss really it does come with like a mud guard which is a brake but there's not a lot of clearance so I took them off but it's got a front brake that locks in place. It's on at the moment, so it can't push forward. I like it. You're not getting anywhere in a hurry, but you're getting there in one piece and nothing's gonna break on it. Like I say, I have my cool box here, my rucksack on top, so that's the weight, and then an unhooking mat in there with all my bits in and the bed chair upright at the front. Rod's over the top. Easier than pushing. Yeah, it's a very, very well made bit of clobber. We like it, but it is a bit raving blue. But hey ho, everything hasn't got to be green, has it? Carp can't see it. Well, by the time the carp do get to see it, it's too bloody late. They're already up here with me. Hopefully, there'll be another one up here soon.
There we go. You alright there mate? You don't want to be out here do you? You want to be back in the pond with your mates. You've got a leaf on your back. The old autumn special, just like the last one. Hopefully you're in better focus than the last one because we cocked that up a bit, didn't we? There he is. Mr. Angry Common. Go, you beat me up, didn't you, mate? Nice. Okay, let's get you back in the pond. So, there we go, Mr. Collins gone back to his home. Um, I've got to say, I am absolutely loving it here. It just feels a little bit like going home, or coming home, I should say, to me. I spent so much time here in the way back in the day. And I know I keep banging on about back in the day and that, but I can't help it. You just get flooded with these memories of being at Raysbury. It's a beautiful lake. And it's got a load of beautiful fish in it. I'm a happy boy. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I love it. What could be better? It's all gravy, as they say. All gravy. Beautiful sunny November day. Fish on the bank. Fish jumping. It's looking like a beautiful day. So, there we have it, a return to Raysbury. Uh, it definitely won't be the last, that's for sure. In fact, to be honest, it's not the first. I went there the week before that vlog um, and filmed a vlog for the Inner Circle, my Patreon channel, which also had lots of good old stories and stuff in it. And I looked around the opposite side of the lake, all around the Rocky Barge and uh, told a few tales of stuff that had happened there over the years. If you are a fan of that sort of stuff, of, of sort of the old tales, or if you were watching the um, Obsession with Carp stuff through the lockdown and you haven't heard of the Patreon, um, or if you've heard of it and, and you don't know exactly what it is, it's um, basically an extension of what I've done in lockdown with Obsession with Carp, and we're doing it at the moment with Flick of the Tail. Since we started a few months ago, um, <clears throat> I've covered um, the start of the Mir campaign, um, even went up there with a video camera. Um, so there's some footage on there of all along the sort of public bank of the mere looking out and I talk about all the swims and stuff. Um, we've done Conningbrook, uh, the whole Conningbrook saga and all the sort of parties along the way and the social scene which is amazing at Conningbrook and eventually my capture of Two Tone. That's on there. Um, we've been up to the Cotswold Water Parks uh, where I fished a lake up there that we call nicknamed Charlie's beautiful one of the nicest lakes I've ever had the pleasure of fish beautiful so you've got the whole story of that's on there uh, and we've just started on Sonnen uh, and my quest for the eye uh, we're one episode into that I believe <clears throat> but as well as that sort of story based stuff there's also like I said there's vlogs that I do um, my on the bank vlogs that are I do once a month I do one just for the inner circle like a members only one so, for example, if here on YouTube you've watched my um, island adventures, there's ones that you haven't seen. There's, there's ones that only go out on the Inner Circle channel. Also, we have uh, questions and answers, which is once a month again, which is probably, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour long, something like that. And I go through you know, all the various questions that come in. In fact, the, what you can't quite see down here is a load of rig stuff and just general bomb site where I've just finished doing... Um, a little bit on rigs and technical stuff but it's not all technical we do fun stuff we do you know specialized stuff stuff about braid we've done stuff about boat markers we've done self photography uh, and what happens every month i pick a sort of pick of the month you know a, a monthly winner if you like prize winning question and they win 100 pounds worth of mainline bait and i do a separate vlog for that winning question which is in a lot more detail um, so basically what you get for your month is usually three tales from Flick of the Tail. Um, when we get to the end of that book, it's going to go straight into fine lines. 
It's in a lot more depth than it is in the book, obviously, because I can explain it all in a lot more detail, a lot more time. Uh, so you get three of those. You get one members only vlog um, about, like I say, anything up to an hour's questions and answers and the prize winning questions, the separate video and the whole lot cost five quid, which I don't think is bad, to be honest. The government will stick another quid on for the old vodka and tonic tax, unfortunately. But you know what they say, there's only two things absolutely definite in this life and that's death and taxes. So we can't avoid that. Um, I don't get to see it, unfortunately. But there you go. So it's a fiver a month. Um, the link to it will be in the in the sort of description bit below this. Um, so if you fancy having a look, pop over, give it a go. You can join for a month and see how you get on. If you do join now, you will actually get to see all the previous stuff since it started. That won't go on forever. That's going to be put in a separate vault um, on a different level. But if you do join, if you click full content, I think it says on the tab when you join, then you'll get to see all the other stuff for a while. Give you a chance to catch up. So there you go. Hope you've enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you next time. Ta-da! Thank you.